Dana Koto, Katoa, Kia ora, and welcome to all you ice hockey fauna out there in uh, Aotearoa and anywhere that you are watching across this great nation that we um, we call home here. Um, I myself, I'm Ian Wanamaker, joined alongside the fantastic and fabulous, as always, very stylish, Mr. Joel Rindelob. And we are two commentators taking the NZIHL action for you here this evening. And we are very much so looking forward to this contest tonight between the Botany Swarm and the Phoenix Thunder. Oh, it's going to be great. I am really looking forward to this. We have two teams right next to each other in the table. And with only four games left in the regular season, a lot is on the line today. Fantastic. Before we get to the game action, we are going to have our friend Logan within our episode of Quick Shifts. Over to you, Logan. Kia ora and welcome back to another round of NZHL Quick Shifts with Puck here. We're down to the business end of the season with finals just around the corner. So let's recap on where the teams are at, all thanks to our mates at Sales Pizza. The Phoenix Thunder have wrapped up their home schedule for the year, hosting the undefeated Sky City Stampede at Dunedin Ice Stadium. In Game 1, the Stampede jumped to a two-goal lead via Matt Schneider and Connor Harrison, before a nifty deflection by crowd favourite Dylan Devlin saw the Thunder strike back. Wilson take another shot and SCORES! Oh. Little deflection up into that top corner. The visitors were sharing the love around with five different scorers, including goals by Braden Lee and Mike McCray, just 28 seconds apart for a 4-1 lead after two periods. McCray, shot in and out. McCog taps it up to Max McCog. Max takes a shot. And that, was, that went in and out so fast. Final score, 6-2 to the Stampede. In game two, the defending champs put the pedal down and fired five goals in the first period alone, including this beauty from Harrison McCarg. Moves past one and tucks it upstairs. That was a fantastic shot there from McCarg. Up to McIntosh, Colin McIntosh, the enigma. Shot scores, Connor Harrison. There were plenty more nice ones where that came from. Joe Orr gave the home crowd something to cheer about with his fourth goal of the season. Aguar struggling to keep it in and he does it. And a great shot. Just sort of a, it developed very quickly. Orr with a deflection in front of the net. Schneider would have the last laugh though. The Stampede captain putting up two more to complete the hat trick. His lead in the NZHL scoring race now extends to 16 points. Skates through a couple, he's got room and slips it in, moving more to the right, and he goes left. Final score 9-2, the Stampede are now just two games away from completing the perfect season. They'll wrap up their regular season August 20 and 21 at home against the Botany Swarm. Fresh off their big 2-1 win over the Admirals last weekend, the Swarm were in Christchurch to battle the Red Devils. With young talent like Jacob Carey in the lineup though, the home side continued to show they're a team on the rise. And a shot. And a goal! That's going to count! What a play by Jacob Carey! Later in the first period, Alex Polozov tied things up for Botany, 1-1 heading into the intermission before Canterbury ran away with it in the second. Collects that, shot in oh, and a goal. goal! What a shot! Tap gets it back around Dalmore right in front. Oh. oh, what a save that was! And a goal! Oh. <laughs> How did that happen? Sent high into Carey. Carey's going to take that out of the sky. Right in front and a goal. Oh, my God. Jacob Carey. Wow. Jacob Carey. The Swarm got a couple back later in the third, but it was the Red Devils' night picking up their second win of the season. Final score, 5-3. Game two, though, was a different story. Botany rocketing to a 5-0 lead by the halfway mark. Wartenhoff with a shot in and a goal. A nifty move to get around his defender. 3-0 the score. And we continue on. Another opportunity for this one. And a fourth goal, just like that. Penalty trouble had the Swarm on the back foot shortly after, and the Red Devils took full advantage, scoring three goals on the power play. Uh, there's a lot of room out in front, and that's a goal. There it is. It's about time. And Dean Tonks cracks that safe. With the uh, five on three, they, did, they were very effective moving the uh, defenders across the ice and getting it away from the puck. Do it again here. Dalimore with a shot right out in front of the goal. Oh. There it is. Atwell got caught out in front of the crease. Heavy wrister in. Harrison knocks it aside. Goes back out to Tonks. He's going to pass it this time. Shot in and goal. Oh. 
Wow. That's where the comeback ended, however, the Swarm capping off the turnaround effort with two more. Final score, 7-3. This weekend sees the return of the New Zealand Women's League, with rounds 1 and 2 taking place in Dunedin. Make sure you're following the NZWHL's new social pages for more info, and check out the most recent Pakia podcast for our interviews with Callie Nelson and Jasmine horner Pasco. How do you rate the Steel's chances uh, this season? I think we're still in with a good shot. Like, I've looked at some of those team rosters, like I saw the Dunedin roster, and I was like, oh my god, like, look at this team, they're amazing. But there's a lot of fight in us Auckland girls, you know, and we've, got, like I said, those young girls are just so keen. Um, so they just go and go and go, and I think mm. that, that puts us in a good spot. But yeah, it wouldn't put us out. In NZHL action this weekend, the Stampede get a break while the Animals head to Christchurch to face the Red Devils and the Swarm host the Thunder in Auckland. Every game is crucial in deciding second and third place. But that's it for NZHL Quick Shifts this week. We'll be back next Wednesday. But until then, go support your local hockey club and we'll see you next time. Tina Pai, Logan, thank you very much for that awesome recap of around the league. And also, thanks very much for introducing that new women's league that is taking shape and awesome with those new names and wicked jerseys, the Canterbury Inferno, the women's team. I love it. Gotta like say, I love, love it. it. Yeah. We got four teams now in the New Zealand Women's Ice Hockey League, so a growing sport here in NZ. You love to see all these teams competing and follow along at home as that season is just kicking off now. A lot of good hockey coming your way. Fantastic. Speaking of which, Joel, we got a great contest here tonight. This is a game that has a lot on the line for both clubs. Probably more so for the Phoenix Thunder. However, the Swarm looking to move into that and secure that third points, uh, third placing in the standings. Absolutely, this is a huge weekend for both teams. The Swarm currently sitting in that third position, so that's the last playoff spot. However, the Thunder just five points behind them. So a big showing from the Thunder this weekend could completely turn the tide of this table. Absolutely. So you never know what you're going to see. And stick around, folks, to see that as the, the Phoenix Thunder is sitting on 12 points, as Jules mentioned, five points behind the, the Botany Swarm sitting on 17. Closely behind the West Auckland Admirals sitting in second spot with 19 points. So things could shake up. Um, who knows how it's going to shake up. But the Stampede sitting comfortably at the top of the table. Let's see how they are going to be watching these games and uh, hopefully not getting a little too comfortable up there as they are definitely the ones to knock off that mantle. Well, they have 42 points so far on 14 wins, so no blemishes against their record thus far. They're definitely the premier class of the NZIHL this year, but let's not count out these other teams. They've shown it that they, uh, the Stampede have actually had to do some work late in these games to secure the victory. So it hasn't just been a free-for-all as the record may suggest. And two teams here that are both capable of turning it on in an instant are both the Phoenix Thunder and the Botany Swarm. Absolutely. And um, yeah, we're again looking forward to this contest here tonight, Joel, and hopefully all those viewers out there are doing the same, anticipating this great matchup. And speaking of like Stampede, like we really want to see how they are going to approach and get into this um, finals if they have that mentality because they have this is they're on the, the brink of NZHL history they have no one I don't think has ever set and a winning like have no losses throughout one season yeah haven't even been Hasn't to been overtime done. so we'll see exactly what happens with that fun fact on our table as far as goal differential goes there is only one team that is positive Everyone is negative, except for the Swarm, who are at even. Even goal differential on this season, that means they've scored as many as they have let in. And they're hoping that they can actually turn that to the positive here this weekend. Uh, that's what you want. You want to be in that positive category. And um, a lot of those goals have come against these Stampede quite clearly. So let's hope they can put it up, get some goals, as this is a pretty potent offensive league. Um, anyone watching? Absolutely. And speaking of potent offense, this year we have Paris Hyde once again doing work for the Thunder. One of the top goal scorers and point getters has 21 so far in just 12 games for the Phoenix Thunder. Yeah, setting fifth place uh, with the top four placings in the scoring race being one, two, three, four for the Sky City Stampede. So he's in elite company right there and he's having a great season. Not too far off is uh, his teammate Ben Harford, who's sitting on 12 points as a defenseman. Yeah, really, really offensive, 
talented defender in Ben Harford. Also, this is his 100th NZIHL game for the youngster. So congratulations to Ben. Hopefully we can see 100 more from him. Absolutely. We're in the double ones out there, so he's got getting his 100th game tonight. Uh, he's played for the Stampede as well previously. He's um, had a few years there, four years actually. It's his third year in the Thunder, and he's also represented New Zealand in the World Championship level for the under-18s, under-20s, winning awards for the best forward, but now a defenseman. And he's had most goals, most points, including a gold medal at the under-18 Worlds and a bronze at the under-20 Worlds. So not only is he doing it on the ice, he's getting it done in the classroom, Joel. So he's moved to Dunedin. He started studying a degree at the University of Otago, completing medicine. He wants to become a surgeon in the future. Yeah, a fifth-year medical student at the University of Otago. Going to become a doctor someday, so much credit to him. Well, quite an all-around, uh, not just an ice hockey per player, but a person as well. So well done, Ben, on multiple fronts. Good luck on uh, completing that uh, doctoral degree, and we look forward to seeing you complete your 100th tonight. Well, one game at a time here for the Thunder. That's really what they got to focus on. I know you talked to coach Jeff Avery of the Phoenix Thunder earlier. What did he really have to say that the Thunder needed to do tonight? Yeah, he had some pretty simple messages. He did say, keep it simple. He's going to roll his lines. He said he was going to do a 1-2-3-4, 1-2-3, 1-2-3-4, -3 kind of in that order. He said that his team knows the importance. They know that what they are capable of doing, they know what has to be done, and they are going to put their young guns up. They are, he said that he wants to get them the time and give them that growth and the opportunity to develop. So hopefully that uh, comes to fruition from the Thunder point of view. Yeah, a young roster, but definitely, as we mentioned, some talent out there for those boys in green. We'll see what they can bring it here tonight because as we saw from the, the table, they really have no margin for error. They can't really afford to be dropping points, especially to those teams directly above them in the table if they want to make that play on you. So again, Pressure can bring out the best in players and also can bring out the worst. So we will see how they react to that pressure tonight. Hopefully they can mount up to that challenge. Also speaking of uh, conversation with coaches, we um, had another opportunity to chat with the Swarm head coach and very, very quick and quite direct with his answers. And he was saying, his team's ready. They know what's at stake and they know what to do. They just have to go out there, play it like they want it. Well, as we saw last weekend down in Canterbury, the Red Devils actually took a game off the Swarm. The Red Devils' first win in regulation this year. They did wow. get an overtime win earlier against the Thunder. But and they did lose up here to overtime as well. When they that's were right. They've had they've on overtime. They've been in games, just not getting it done in the end. But the so, Swarm did take that second game, Joel, and then they split that series. So they did earn some of those valuable points which has got that five point margin that we spoke of earlier against the Phoenix Thunder. Indeed. Meanwhile, the Swarm on the other side have been getting quite a few points themselves on the score sheet. Some long time skaters are actually climbing up that Swarm historical point list. Yourself, number seven on that list, Ian Wanamaker is being caught here by Captain Andrew Hay. Well, what a privilege, I mean, um, been a privilege just to play for the Swarm, but uh, if anybody is going to do it, let's see Andrew Hay. I mean, all the best to him. If he gets that tonight, I'll be the one of the first to shake his hand, and he's moving up that ladder. Also on that points table, you mentioned points. Michael Atwell is tied for fifth place at the moment, I believe, with Andy Hay's brother, Josh, who says fifth all-time Swarm points. Both tied at 117 career points in that Swarm sweater. So a lot of milestones, a lot of action, but most importantly, points out there for the getting for both of these squads. So sit back, stand up, get yourself a beverage, clean that monitor screen, enjoy this action right, from the NZIHL out there at Oa Ice Hockey. It is our top league here in New Zealand, and these teams are definitely going to be bringing it tonight. You have the Phoenix Thunder in the bright green and white jersey uniforms, and you've got the home Botany Swarm wearing a maroon and white and black playing here at the Hive Botany. So here we are live from Botany, New Zealand.
suburb of East Auckland getting ready for some NZIHL action. That is Richie Hopkinson for the Swarm. He'll take the draw against the veteran Paris Hyde. And we are off. And here's Thuler for the Swarm. He'll come into the zone. The defenseman making a move towards the goaltender, Bonarkowskis, but unable to pull the trigger. I think uh, he was a bit surprised himself making that move, and the defenseman... Oh, big hit in up. the far corner as Paris Hyde takes out Polozov. Polozov lost the twig in the process, but he's able to get up. Some early statements from Paris saying not going to be pushed around tonight. So it'll be Harford now for the Thunder behind his own goal. As the men in green get a change, now up to Devlin across the red line. He'll just throw one in. And then tries to get it himself. Two Thunder players collide and smash into the wall. Had a little chance there off the end boards. But they ran into each other instead of the puck. A bit of an unfortunate event there to negate the scoring opportunity. Now Ollie Hay gets knocked off the puck. And now here come the Thunder with some passion in the offensive zone. That's Darling finds the shin pad of Kozak. And Bonarkowskis is up to play that. He's over towards Lilly. But Vortanov is able to get it for the Swarm. And once again, Lilly with some time now. He'll play it up the ice. As that's the, one of the Audas brothers who had his pocket picked. And it's now back in the Swarm offensive zone. Lilly. He'll ring that around the wall. Kept in nicely at the line by Reed Cole. Somewhat awkwardly, you might say, but he did a double pad stack to stop that puck from getting out of the zone. Well, whatever works, really. Yeah. And here's Luke Simon to chase for the puck with Otis. Taking a big bump. And he beats his man, so that will be an icing on the Thunder and a faceoff back in the Swarm offensive zone. Going to give Reed Cole a little bit of the benefit of the doubt there as he kind of just... Uh, it looked like a double pad stack, but also looked like he kind of fell over his own two feet, but did block that puck from getting in the zone. Throwing the body, laying the body down, doing what you can to make plays. Sacrificing everything, even his own aesthetics, to make it happen. Well, he's got that new matte black helmet. I wonder if that's got anything to do with it. It might. He's battling behind the net now, trying to center it in front and swarm. Literally swarming the Thunder goal. Winston Lee was right there, but Barakowskis made a nice job to cover that one up. Jonas Barakowskis, goaltender for the Swarm, has a brother on the rival squad here. Older brother, too, Mattis. Yes. Who has been described as Captain Andy Hay as nothing short of a unit. He is built like a brick, some kind of house. Four letter words starting with S, ending with a T. You do the rest out there. Soot. Well, something. It's on fire, and now it's just <laughs> soot. <laughs> I haven't visited many soot houses. Thuler from the point. Oh, doesn't get it through. Yeah, looking for Janssen on the deflection there, but unable to connect. That's something we've seen both of these clubs do uh, quite successfully, is get those pucks towards the net and some of these deflections as the Thunder actually opened the scoring in their last series against the Stampede on a really nice deflection in front. That's something they're probably going to want to keep doing tonight. Absolutely. Take away the goalie's eyes, have a nice deflection in front. Not much you can do. So here's Hopkinson now. But that is stolen off his stick by Gregory. And then a big hit by Moss and throws Gregory face first in the wall. And there's going to be a delayed call on that hit. Centering feet here for Gregory. Puts one towards the net, but that goes over the glass. And we'll get the whistle, and this is going to be a roughing call on Malson in our first power play of the game. That is true, Joel. Um, again, I don't know how you want to see that from um, your standpoint, but from what we saw, Malson is a much bigger man and player than his opponent that he hit, that he ran into. Oh, mo most people turning. in this league, really. Absolutely, yeah, he's a bit of a beast. But he was turning, and in that kind of meter distance from the boards, it is a bit of a dangerous territory. So anytime a player turns their body, it's going to be a tough one, if, especially if the referee has got a different position watching the angle of contact. That will be called quite often, as we've seen here. Yeah, anytime you see a player go face first into the wall, that is a scary play here in the ice hockey as Kennedy makes his first save of the night. So you can see why the refs might blow the whistle on this occasion. So five on four action here for two minutes as Mawson takes a seat. And it will be the Thunder to take the draw to the right of Canada. 
Played up to Darley now. Darling throws one towards the net, but Canada flashes that leather as he saw it all the way. He was looking to go upstairs as that first shot from Aguirre Lenshoff was a nice wrist shot from that first opportunity on the power play, but this second one also coming from the point. So Phoenix Thunder sending a lot of puck to the net from outside that crucial house area. And played up to Darling again at the point. He'll go over to Felipe Aguirre Lenshoff. Now near side looking for Joe Orr just off his stick and the Swarm are able to clear. Swarm do a four full change on their penalty kill but that gives the opportunity for the Thunder as they come in with a nice wrist shot but just gone wide. Devlin was looking short side but missed everything. Hides there to recover. And Devlin again. A little back and forth action with Hyde. And it's leave to Harper at the top. He throws one towards the net. Hits some traffic in front but ultimately Canada saw it and held on. Meanwhile, Paris oh, Hyde. Was, takes a slash to the back of the leg from Ollie, and uh, someone else put him on his backside. So he's he's making his presence felt in front of the Swarm goal. Yeah, Paris Hyde there was draped all over Canada due to a bit of a chop in the back of the legs. The referees keenly saw that, putting him away. So that'll be a slashing penalty and a five-on-three opportunity here for the Phoenix Thunder. Early in this first. Right now. They're having a two-man advantage this early. Really giving them an open door here. Huge opportunity here for the Thunder with this top unit out there led by High. There's a centering feed, and it oh, just sweet. rings off the iron as Gregory had a look from the slot. Now up top, it's Harford. Down low to Hyde. Centering feed again looking for Gregory. Once again, left uncovered, but couldn't hit the net. Now Harford again throws one and just misses wide, and the Thunder have cleared the puck themselves after some great opportunities there. Setting up a really good, kind of like a Tampa Bay Lightning five-on-three setup, setting up that middleman, usually where a Braden Point or a Blake Coleman would set up and just couldn't get it. Swarm looking to clear here as they have the puck possession on a five-on-three. Yeah, you don't see that very often, especially standing behind your own net as Thuler was there without any pressure with only three men on the ice to the Thunder's five. So able to burn some valuable seconds there as it's played up but kept in at the line by the Thunder. And now Hyde, there's a shot right on, but Canada in great position and he holds on. He's got um, some early form at the moment, Joel. So Canada um, getting that start over Grace Harrison with already facing six shots on goal in the first five minutes and having to kill off a five on three. Swarmer under the gun here as we see some great shooting, just not getting into the back of the net. Yep, Gino's probably not too happy with himself as that shot as he put it right into the bread basket of Canada, but credit to Canada for being there in that great position. Now work here on the near wall, it's Joe Orr trying to get possession. He's able to get it out to Felipe. There's a shot towards the net, softly played by Tuller, and he'll put it to the near wall for safety. And just one hand was able to put it out to center ice as the first penalty to Mawson expires. So five on four action here for just about 20 seconds. Into the zone to the far side, that's Blair. His shot's blocked by Barakowskis. And it's played out for Darling. Mawson loses control there. Blows past everyone. And then played into the zone by Aguirre Lanschulf. Barakowskis, the first one there. He'll throw it up the wall, but it goes right to Devlin. Now Devlin with some room for the corner. Throws one in and a shot saved by Canada from a sharp angle. Dangerous play by Thuler right in front of his goaltender, but able to make the nice play and finally chipped out by Barakowskis. Swarm playing with a bit of fire. They're in their own zone, not connecting with their passes. Uh, it's been a bit of a theme this season, and they, they took another shot unmarked against them. So they're gonna have to correct that going into the second half of this period. Here's a centering feed. Ollie Hay was looking for Kozak as we're back to five on five action here at the Hive. And then Ollie Hay takes a hit from one defender and use that inertia to take down one of the Thunder players. Bit of a domino effect. Now Kozak has it one from the slot. Five. Throws it in in a big skate save by Barakowskis. Seen both teams have ample opportunities in that very dangerous slot zone 
as you teach your defenders, that's the area you want to protect the most, not so far in this one. Yeah, letting, letting it open. Once it again, again Mordanoff from the slot. Oh, and does get a shot away. Rebound still loose, and a second attempt is suffocated by Bonarkowskis as some more action coming right in front of the goal now. And the referee's got his hand up here, so we're going to have another penalty call, possibly going to the Phoenix Thunder this time. We'll see who goes towards the penalty box. Looks like the Swarm have earned a power play. And that is correct. We have number 29, I believe it is. Reed. That is Isaac Reed, who is going to sit down for two minutes after a little bit of action. Too much action there after the whistle in front of the goal. The referees are calling this one tight. They don't want any sort of pushing, shoving, dangerous after whistle activity in front of that goal. So we'll keep things tight here and two minutes on the board. First power play of the night for the Swarm. Yeah, referees make it very clear. Nothing happening in front of that goal area and they're, like you mentioned, calling it tight. So another power play opportunity for this time, Bonnie Swarm. And a whistle coming here is Ben Harford batted that with a high stick out of the mid air, but instead pulls off the first one to touch it. So that will negate and we play on. And pulls off, looking for a lane here. Going to go back door, but a nice play by Tristan Darling to get a stick on that. Now here comes Paris Hyde the other way. Hyde trying to get around Janssen, puts on the brakes. Short-handed feed, goes cross ice towards Harford. Harford's shot is deflected. Into the near side, it's Thuler who's just trying to regroup here as the theater thunder showing some life here on the penalty kill. Now cross ice to Paul's off as the Swarm finally get it out of the zone. Pulls off, plays it up towards Thuler. Thuler trying to go cross ice, but that's batted out of midair by Gregory. But Atwell's there to recover. And twice this one trying to get through that lane, forcing through the uh, clogged up area. So they're going to have to try and rework this on the outside. Then backdoor pass there for Mawson and a huge save by Vodrakowskis. Punching at the blocker, sliding across on the one-timer. Impressive work from the youngster. Just as I say that, they pass across ice to an open man and just didn't connect. Swarm actually had two open men back door. Didn't know which one was going to pull the trigger. So some defensive collapses here early from both teams, but yet nothing to show for it yet. And Ollie Hay, he'll throw one towards the net, but Gregory gets a skate on that. Another opportunity was looking for a tip from Bortonop, but he couldn't get any wood on it. And it's Kozak. He'll go down lower towards Vortinov, gets it right back, fakes a shot, and then back to Vortinov. Vortinov, well, there's a deflection opportunity as Ollie Hay was right in the slot, but his tip goes over the glass into the ceiling, and we get that whistle. Yeah, so they maybe the Swarm are watching some of that game tape footage that the um, Phoenix Thunder used against the Sky City Stampede with having a man parked in front of the net and getting that shot pass redirected from the stick to get that towards the goal. Looks like we have some super fans on the far side getting down with the dance moves. There's three of them over there in swarm sweaters. You like to see that kind of support here in Botany. Absolutely, Joel. Traditionally a bit of a conservative, quiet crowd, but they're certainly getting into it tonight. In fact, very full crowd here in Botany. We've even seen some Thunder jerseys that have made the trip all the way down from Dunedin. So everyone here can clearly see the importance of this matchup. And now Whiston Lee goes the other way. Solid defense there, though. Held his ground by um, Tristan Darling. Yeah, got a skate on that. And now a nice play up. And here's Audis. Audis puts one on, but steered away by the blocker of Canada. And it's Mawson who plays it up the wall. He was looking for Commons, got past everyone. And icing waved off here as Harford's able to retreat. Bit of hesitation from the um, linesman in the black and white, but made a good call there, kept the play going. No whistle, we play on. And here's Polozov now trying to get around his defender. Able to do so momentarily, and we're going to get a whistle here. As it looks like the net That's has off. become ajar just slightly as Barakowskis the big man himself was sliding across. So we'll get a face off and just inside to the zone to the right of Barakowskis. 
Yeah, if anyone watching that could have been a little bit confused as to why that whistle went. I thought it could have been also for a penalty. It looked like because Polozov had possession of the puck. He had two men on him, taking a couple of hacks and whacks. That is not the case here. Five on five. We have even strength between the Swarm and the Thunder. So that's Polozov again with the puck. Leaves it for Janssen in the slot, but he can't control. Now it's Joe Orr the other way. Orr with some speed. Throws one towards the net. Misses everything. And that's Blair that tries to play it, but Mawson steals it from him. And now a two-on-two -two game as the pass is just up ahead. and It'll be a chase for the puck. Played up the near wall towards Blair. Tried to find Devlin, unable to do so. And it's Orr on the far side. Orr plays it up to Devlin. Devlin with a shot from a sharp angle, but Canada sees that all the way and once again flashes that potent, potent leather. Leather doing a trick because it takes an awful lot of rubber being shot at it on a repetitive basis. We've seen a lot of leather actually from Canada this season. Some of the most impressive steals and snatches with that left arm that I recall in recent memory here in the NZIHL. Definitely has a bit of a flair for that dramatic save, but hey, that is great. When you're a goaltender and you're playing with confidence, you love to see that out there on the ice rink. And both goaltenders here actually elicit a lot of confidence in these Swarm players as they have some great options back there in the pipes. And here's Ollie Hay, the defender, getting in on the offensive action. Him and Tristan Darling going at a little bit. Ollie Hay a little happy with the stick so far. It has one slashing call already. Didn't quite like that uh, harassment he was receiving out there after that uh, hit. And now Enright has it as Atwell's on his back. And the players do battle in the corner and Sande is able to scrape it out. Gets it up to Kozak. He'll go to far side towards Vortinov who just throws a clapper towards the net. But a stick save by Bonarkowskis. Now the near side. Able to get up the ice. And here come the Thunder two on one. Centering feed there. Shot right on. And Canada makes the save and no rebound to be found. Another good stepping up play by Canada. Cutting off that angle is a two on one. Odd man rush coming back against him. And he puts up that left, oh sorry, that right side blocker and makes a, he squeezes it, makes a nice save as Prattley fed his teammate and the Phoenix Thunder literally getting robbed. So that's some good offensive work here. The fourth line out there for the Thunder. There's a shot that just missed the far post. Kind of caught everyone by surprise on that one. As that was Prattley who put a backhander towards the net. He's on a line with both Lewis and Wilson. Showing some of the young depth that the Thunder have to work with here. Now, turnover in front. There's a shot right on. And Canada again makes the save. Thunder out shooting the Swarm 11 to 5 early. And a stick save there by Bonarkowskis. Wiston Lee will try it play down low. Instead, just absorbs a hit from Prattley. And Thuler gets around his man. Sharp angle shot is fanned on. As Harford's on his back. Now played to the near side. That's Janssen with the puck. He'll bring it into the zone one on two. Throws it towards the net. A little bit of a fluttering puck, but Bonarkowska is able to knock that down and hold on. A little bit unorthodox, Joel, as uh, Jonas Barakowska, the goaltender for the Phoenix Thunder, reached cross body kind of in front of his body to use the glove to stop the puck. It was a knuckle puck, so he didn't control it with a glove instantly. He put it down and uh, had to hold on and... Kept, it, it, for kept it in front of him, which yeah. is the, the goal for any goaltender behind, behind the eight ball. Yeah, keeping control of those rebounds is not an easy test. So there's a backhand centering feed by Polozov that didn't get through as Bonarkowska's got a stick on it. Sitting in that RVH position. Look at you with the goaltender terminology. Ian Wanamaker, hockey enthusiast. <laughs> The goaltending position, not something many ice hockey players put a lot of detail or focus on, 
Unless, of course, you are a goaltender, in which it ruins your whole life. That is true. And, hey, when you know what the goaltenders are doing and what position they're in, if you're an attacker, an attacking player, and you are skilled enough to put the puck where they are not, you have an advantage. And your advantage over the goaltender, you will take it. Ian Wanamaker teaching the youngsters here how to play mind games in the NZIHL. So listen to the wise man himself as Kozak's behind the net. Centering feed there. Off the iron. What a oh, well. clear shot. All alone had Barakowskis actually looking the other way. Was able to pick up in that open spot. Unable to finish, though. And there's Kozak with a shot. Another save by Barakowskis. As the Swarm are starting to get a few shots together here. Nice play there by Felipe aguere Lanchoff to protect the puck in his own zone and move it forward. And then, then that's Felipe he retreats here, going D to D. And finally played out of the zone by Wilson. And Reed Cole to retreat in his own end. Now Cole going cross ice was looking for Vortinov. Missed him completely, so Wilson will try to play it up. And able to get it out momentarily as Cole could not keep it in. Under five minutes remaining here, Joel, in that first period of play. Four minutes, 38 seconds. Both teams looking to get on that score sheet. Here's Barakowskis trying to throw one on his brother, Jonas. Also known as Johnny B. JB for sure. And now here come the swarm. It's Commons' first one to the puck. Centering feed there is deflected to Gregory. And then finally out towards Paris High. Hyde across the blue, trying to go one on two and split the D. Unable to do so, but Orr was there to trail only momentarily. And now up towards Winston Lee, who knocks that out of air cleanly, say the referees. Throws one towards the net, but it's a shin pad seeker. And now to the near side are the Thunder. That's Rolf who has it. He'll go back to the D-man, and they'll try the other side. Or leaves it for Harford, but a nice play from Polzov to steal it from him. And now Swarm have possession. Throws one towards the net, rebounds there for momentarily, but it goes right to the tip of Orr, and he's able to get it out. Now Tuller finds the stick of Polzov. Polzov fakes a shot. Toe drag. Still with the maneuver, but Bonarkoska is able to just get a pad on that. And now a sharp angle opportunity from Hopkinson. But Bonarkoska once again uses that RVH to hold strong against the pipe and oh. covers it up. Well spotted, Joel, and so just Johnny on the spot. Giannis, Jonas, as <laughs> well as, oh, Richie. He was also on the spot there looking for a uh, quick, sneaky shot short side. But as mentioned, denied. Denied. So shots have evened up now after a bit of a spurt from the Swarm. 12 apiece in this opening period, but yet... No goals to show for thus far. So even on the shot count, even on the score sheet, somehow somebody will break through for one of these teams. And that's Atwell who's able to look up and absorb a hit from Darling. Puck still at the line, fighting for it in front of the Thunder bench here. And the Thunder player is doing a good job to just sit down and patiently watch their man Devlin take it out and into the zone. Leaves it for Orr, his shot right on, but Canada once again holds on and no rebound as Blair was right in front of him. Excellent job so far by Canada with that rebound control. You're seeing it, and, uh, but the thing is with the Phoenix Thunder, they're getting those odd man rushes. Pretty simplistic on the game, game like attack strategy is to drive wide, send the puck, drop to the high man and shoot the puck. And there's a shot right there that missed everything from Darling. Definitely one of their strategies is to try to get that towards the net, but Canada not helping out the Thunder at all with his just clinical goaltending thus far. Yeah, and that's he, off to you, Canada. You keep it going. You got two minutes in this first. Of course, Canada, the former goaltender of the Thunder. And there's a shot right on. Save made by Bonarkowskis as he responds to Canada standing tall in his own right in front of that net. Yeah, so stay tuned, uh, those people that are watching or listening to this broadcast. We will be interviewing both goaltenders um, separately in between different periods. After the first period break, we will have Jonas Barakowskis as well as his brother Mathis. 
And then Matt Kennedy in the second and third period. And there's a deflection and a great save by Bodrakowskis. Wraparound opportunity, and Bodrakowskis shuts the door again. He, he went post to post, and Janssen tried the wraparound. The net got knocked off by Barakowskis' right skate as Janssen is trying to jam that puck in on a wraparound. Wasn't there. He didn't get it. Tried the rebound. Didn't realize the net was off. He could have went upstairs. Well, he couldn't because Bodrakowskis' powder was there suffocating that attempt. Just some great side-to-side -side movement by Johnny B there and absolutely shut the door. The Swarm don't have much to complain about there with the net coming off because they couldn't get it past him anyway. Game of inches, Joel, and that was as close as you can get. So both Total goaltenders goal. looking sharp here in this first period, making some great saves all over the place. So we can ask Jonas Bonarkowskis about that after the first intermission here as my main man Ian will be digging deep into the life of the Bonarkowskis brothers. Well, we got a penalty call here. We have a little bit of a free wheeling stick by Felipe Aguarlenshoff giving it to Polozov in front. Oh, and he has also received an unsportsmanlike conduct. The referee has busted out the Cowboys and he's put those two together to make a T sign. That's a 10 minute personal misconduct. He will sit in 10 minutes in and, the box. And that's tough for the Thunder as he is one of their craftier defensemen back there. So a cross check for Felipe Aguirre Lanshoff and then that 10 minute misconduct on top of that. So Ooh, he's got a four minute penalty. Excuse that just me, up. folks. Yes, a double minor. With the cross check in front. So four minutes time to take it. Of power play action here for the Swarm. If they score on the first two minutes, it will be erased, but they will still have that second two minutes to work with. So, so opening it up here for the Bonnie Swarm going ahead. Centering feed shot right on and a big yeah. save by Barnarkowskis as he stuffs Atwell in front. Now up top, it's Thuler, but that jumps over his stick and a little bit of a respite here for the Thunder as the Swarm had some possession on this power play. Here's Mawson with it. He'll skate around Gregory and then just decide to retreat into his own net and plays it on the near wall to Thuler. Thuler finds the stick of Kozak and it's three on two into the zone for the Swarm. And Kozak has it now. He's looking for a feed at top. And he'll just hold on to it himself. No pressure here. Throws one right in. Shot and a save by Barakowskis as he saw that clearly. So Swarm holding on, looking to the wait to have something open up, to like a passing lane. But Kozak elected to shoot it. He had an open shot on goal, took the shot. But Barakowskis is there once again, standing tall. Another one right to the chest. Not probably the spot you want as we are almost into that first period break here. We have 58.9 seconds remaining. 3.03 in that penalty to Aguero Lanchoff. Swarm on the power play. Ollie Hay at the point, sends it over to Sandoy. Sandoy back up to Ollie. Ollie fakes a shot. Looking to Polozov, doesn't give it to him. Gives it to Remy Sandoy up top. Down to Polozov, Polozov back up to Remy Sandoy. Sandoy. Quarterback in the power play. He shoots, shot, save Barakowskis, no rebound in front. As Janssen's on the doorstep looking for a rebound. Nothing there, nothing going. So we have another stoppage. 36.8 seconds left in this first period of play. Swarm, 18 shots on goal to the Thunder's 13 after an early flurry by the Thunder. The Swarm have really dialed it back this period, looking to get onto the score sheet with this power play. Double minor. Shot by the Swarm, stopped by Barakowskis as he gets square to the shooter. Ollie temporarily keeps it in at the line. Thunder looking to get it out of the zone. Ollie Hay gloves it down, puts it back in. Skates towards the middle, sends it on net, wrist shot. As Barakowskis avoids the tip attempt by Polozov, and he stops that with the glove. 13.9 seconds in the first period action. So stay tuned, folks. We've got Jonas. Baris Kauskas and his brother Mattis going to be interesting. One is a goaltender and one is a defenseman playing on opposite teams. We're going to interview them after this period. Oh, Ollie Hay takes down his man. No call there as there was almost a breakaway for the Thunder. And Sandoy skates it back in over the Thunder zone. As the Thunder do clear 
And that will bring us to the end of the first period. 0-0. Zero, zero. We got a bunch of bagels up on that scoreboard. So nothing on the score sheet. Still one penalty that's got two minutes and four seconds remaining in that first period. As we take a short break, but do not go away, folks. We will have an interview coming up with Jonas Batakowskis and Mattis, his brother, coming up next. Stay tuned.
Kia ora, Haki Fano. Welcome back to the Hive Paradise Botany. And we have a very special interview here. This is our first time for all you hockey fans out there. We are joined by the Barakowskis brothers, one back playing on the Phoenix Thunder and the other for the hometown Botany Swarm. Guys, that's got to be a little bit difficult playing against one another in this NZIHL top competition. Going to ask you about that in a minute. But man, I got to comment on the facial upper lip sweaters you guys are rocking right now, as well as the top flow salad. Congrats on that. That's looking fantastic for our viewers out there. Yeah, yeah. cheers. All the viewers, maybe you can vote and see which brother you uh, maybe give the nod to on that one with the uh, with the mo. Uh, okay, guys, can you just tell us a little bit on how you became playing for different teams and why you don't play on the same team? Uh, so we actually we actually both played for Thunder back in the day and um, started probably about six years ago playing together. And yep. uh, I moved up here after finishing school and. Now uh, the rest is uh, history, I think. So Yeah, now it's just a big old competition. Uh, so it's a bit of bragging rights. So there's a lot on the line right now. You guys are playing for some valuable points for that third playoff spot that you're trying to get into. Fantastic. So now we are looking at uh, where does the Barakowskis name come from and how can you help us pronounce that so we get it right for all the family that is watching out there? Uh, so the Barakowskis name is a Lithuanian name. Uh, pretty uncommon. About Five of us in New Zealand, I'd say. Um, basically, the way to say it would be, if you want an English version, it's Barakowskis, as it's spelled. Or if you want to go Lithuanian, you can do Barakowskis. Oh, fantastic. Lithuanian origin, fantastic. Yeah. Well, I don't know how many other Lithuanians have ever played here in New Zealand. If you might be the uh, first, well, maybe the first brothers. Might just be, yeah. Might just be. So setting, I think, so. Yeah. setting some history here in the NZIHL. Awesome, guys. Thank you for that. Now, Mattis, this question is for you. You are a stalwart D-man here in this league as you're getting a good reputation of um, defensive play. You've got, I believe, one NZIHL recorded goal. Are you looking to get one quite soon on the score sheet? What yeah. about tonight? Yeah, hey, look, that's that's uh, always the goal. And uh, unfortunately, after three years or four years of playing against each other, I haven't, uh, haven't had the pleasure of scoring on this young child. So <laughs> hopefully tonight's the night, though. I, I knew asking that question with you being in the net for the other team. So what do you think of your brother's response and what are you going to be doing to stop him, not just him himself, but the whole Swarm team? Uh, well, when it comes to my brother, uh, he says that he knows how I play. Since we play together, I know exactly what he does. Hard shot. I can see it a mile away. Um, in terms of the Swarm, it is a big old team effort, so we're working hard out there. Um, and I'm just, yeah, just trying to get everything I can in front of the puck. Awesome. Well, you've been making some great saves out there Thank and you. some great style. Loving the style you guys are rocking tonight. Good luck for the rest of this game today and all the best the rest of the season. Sweet. We look Thank forward you. to seeing you guys go. Cheers. Thanks, well, guys. Thanks, Wani.
Kia ora and welcome back, ice hockey fans. Thank you very much for joining us as we have this live YouTube broadcast coming at you from the Hive at Paradise Botany here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, I'm flying solo at the moment as Joel has popped out for a short commercial break, but we are back. It is a 0-0 scoreline here at the Hive. Very tight contest between these both teams. The Botany Swarm currently on the power play, so they've got another two minutes and four seconds remaining in that double minor uh, penalty that the Phoenix Thunder took. Felipe got a little um, stick happy, cross-checking Polozov in front of the net, and he is sitting. So the Swarm will be starting on the power play starting in the second period of action. So stay tuned as we watch and get it set for the second period uh, between the Botany Swarm and the Phoenix Thunder. So 0-0 zero, zero is on the scoreboard. However, we have 20 shots on goal for the Botany Swarm, and we've got 13 for the Phoenix Thunder. As mentioned, Felipe, number three for, this, for the Thunder, is sitting two minutes and four seconds of that penalty that he took, that double minor. Swarm looking to capitalize possibly straight away on that, um, on that play and making this possibly get up higher in the scoreline as it is just 0-0 zero, zero on that score sheet. Yeah, we'll start with two minutes of that power play, as you mentioned, for the Swarm. They'll have fresh ice to work with as well. Let's see if they can take advantage of that. A little bit well-rested to start the second period off right. Yeah, Joel, just, uh, you might have missed it, but the Barakowskis brothers, the Lithuanians, as I've been doing some of the research, second set of Lithuanians to be here in New Zealand and playing. One of the first friend of mine coached with them, Vince Metalis. Very, very tall. I don't know where they might get these jeans, the Lithuanian jeans. They, a lot of them are very tall. They got the Verakowskis brothers that are units. Gonna have to visit uh, that Lithuanian country one of these days and just see what uh, is actually going on. Because I know their basketball team is quite good too. A lot of size and athleticism in Lithuania, it would seem. And I'm sure, as you've discussed with those two, they are quite intimate with each other's games going way back to the, you know, the front of the garage on the driveway with Matis taking rippers at Johnny until he cries. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Who knows, he's certainly toughened up. He's got enough padding and equipment. Certainly learned from possibly those early days. That is for sure. Growing up, I believe, in just outside of Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Correct me if I am wrong. So but that... Great hockey family and uh, great to see them here playing, not just against uh, one another, but playing in this top level competition here in New Zealand. So second period just about underway, still scoreless between the Botany Swarm and the Phoenix Thunder. Once again, if you're just joining us late, this game and series is critical to decide who will take that third spot in the playoffs here in the NZIHL. Now we get set back for puck drop. And it will be Ollie Hay. Start things off here for the Swarm on the power play. But it's cleared right up, and Ollie Hay gets a boot on that, and he'll just take it in the zone himself. 150 left here as Bonarkowskis gets a paddle to knock that away, but not out as it's Ollie Hay from the far corner. He'll try to play it down low, and then Atwell gets it behind the net to Reed Cole. Now working on the other side. Plays it down low, and it's Atwell. Atwell up top to Sandoy. He'll survey, throws it towards the net, looking for a tip as two swarm offensive players were right in front of him, but somehow Barakowskis saw that all the way and held on. That is true, but both swarm players elected to get out of the way of the shot, doing a bit of a flamingo with that stance on one foot, allowing Barakowskis to see it all the way, making an easy save. Yeah, that's something the Swarm are going to want to do, especially here on that power play, is if they have people in front of that net, as there's a shot that hits this shin pad of Janssen as Polzoff is looking to put one on, is to try to get those bodies in front, but keep them there when that shot is coming. Yeah, don't get out of the way. Put your body there and let it deflect off you. The goaltender can't see it, can't get eyes on it. Less chance of saving that puck. And I can say, as a goaltender, not being able to save the puck doesn't help. That's... <laughs> bit of an understatement, but you got it. I'll let you have that one. It would haunt you. You don't stop that puck. 
So Swarm doing work here on the power play. Just under a minute left to go. And that penalty to Felipe Aguero Landschaft. And it'll be Polozov with it at the blue line. Down low towards Janssen. That just deflects off his stick. He's able to recover, though. And it's Hopkinson. Here. Setting up the Svechnikov, but not electing to do it. I don't know if he has that skill set in his repertoire. Nice play there by Harford to intercept that pass. And, oh, excuse me, that was Wilson who's able to clear. Two Wilsons on this Dunedin team. Born just five days apart, believe it or not. Four days apart. Do not believe that. Just four days apart. Two Wilsons. Tom, we do not know as much as we do, but Regan. Regan's been a longtime serving member of the Phoenix Thunder and a uh, New Zealand Ice Black. I think he's also a New Zealand police officer, so serving both his community and the ice hockey team as well. Two different Double communities, team. both being served. Service is a wonderful thing. So whistle here as Atwell went across the line a little early, so offside draw will come just outside the zone. Atwell to take the draw himself against Rolf. And it's put right in by Aguero Lanshoff. And here's Ollie Hay for the Swarm. Some speed up through the zone, just bounces off his stick. And the Swarm finally gain entry. That's Kozak to chase. He's able to one-hand that behind the net. Puts on the brakes, was looking for Atwell, who actually was wide open right in front of the goal, but it was broken up and sent the length of the ice by the Thunder. Quite well read by, I believe that's Ian Otis. Otis, Edis, Otis, Otis, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Miss, my apologies if it is incorrect. Uh, one of the brothers on that, uh, excuse me, the Phoenix Thunder team. Yeah, both Ian and, and Sam Otis out there for the Thunder playing uh, opposite wingers here on the third line. Back to five on five hockey. Andy Hay steps up and gets a stick on it. But it's only momentarily as the Thunder regain control and will dump it in themselves. Wholesale change here for the Thunder, giving Andy Hay some room to work with it. Long pass to Janssen, trying to go between the legs and then just throws it blindly backhanded towards the net and forcing Polozov to make a play on it. Now Polozov again, trying to go through the legs of Enright, but he's able to break that up. And now here comes Darling into the zone. He was looking for Gregory, but that was just in front of him. And now behind the net, it's Enright. Centering feed, looking for Nonen in particular, comes up to the line for Lilly, but his shot to flex off pulls off into the far corner for Hyde. Here's a centering feed shot, rebound, and another save, still loose, and that one can't get in as Gregory had a great chance on the rebound and some solid goalkeeping once again by Canada. Thunder piling on that pressure, and they're still not done yet. The Swarm cannot clear the zone. So here's Gregory, finds Hyde. Hyde throws one along the ice, but Canada had the pad down, and the Thunder are able to clear it as the Phoenix Thunder were putting on some pressure here. Swarm will finally get a wholesale change themselves. Some fresh legs out there. For Eddie Commons is the first man in, and the Thunder once again go on the attack. Here's Winston Lee. He's able to get around one man, played up towards Commons. Well, that's kept back into the zone by the Thunder. Swarm having a bit of difficulty getting out of their own zone and getting through the neutral zone, electing to just kind of ice it, send it down, maybe regroup here after they get the face off and set back up. And nothing but an icing as the Swarm panicking a little bit in their own zone, unable to complete a pass and just forcing something all the way the length of the ice. Yeah, almost looking a little bit jittery, um, Joel, as the Phoenix Thunder being a bit relentless, maybe getting a bit of momentum shifted their way after killing off that double minor. And here's Joe Orr with it now for the Thunder. He'll go up top towards Regan Wilson, but that's knocked away by Mawson. Nice stick there by Devlin to keep it in, but it was only momentarily as Reed Cole has it. He's knocked off the puck. And now Devlin, he'll try to bring it in. A little confusion here at the blue line as pucks and skates were going across the line in some 
random order, but instead it's Mawson who has it for the Swarm. Commons will play it down low and get a change as he's gassed. And then this far side, that's Aguera Lanshoff playing it up, but Swarm able to keep it in at the line. Now over towards Regan Wilson. Looking for Devlin, but Atwell puts a shoulder into him. And now Puck's played behind the net. Kozak's there. Tries to get around Devlin, but instead it's Aguera Lanshoff who cuts him off. And then played up towards the middle of the ice. And then back over to Orr. Orr takes a big hit from Atwell, who's throwing the shoulder around on this shift. And it's Swarmer able to clear. Looks like Atwell might be laboring a little bit after a couple of shoulders. He's certainly feeling that as he goes to the Swarm bench. Oh, as we have another massive hit. It looks like Regan Wilson gets his bonnet off, off the top of his head. Excuse me, that's it's Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson. Hard to separate these Wilsons and four days apart. Yeah, Tom Wilson lost the lid there. There's a shot from Hopkinson and a nice pad save by Bonarkowskis. And now here's Ollie Hay who steals the puck. He'll bring it in himself. Shot from a sharp angle, goes off the pants of Lily. And then Lily's thrown the ice by Hay. But the puck carries on for the Thunder and it's up to Hyde. Hyde now into the zone. Ollie Hay throws him down. And a great back check on. there by 20 in white. Hyde pops right back up, though. And some good work down low here by the Thunder. Gained control of the puck. Good possession as Hartford has it here. There's a shot towards the net, but that sticked away nicely as Prattley had a shot from the blue line, but Canada deflects it to safety. And his deflection goes up into the netting, and that is why we'll have a stop of play. But uh, great to see the intensity and the effort from Ollie Hay. And even though he is a defenseman, his back check was quite strong to go against that powerful skating of um, Paris Hyde. And to put him on his backside, no easy task. But uh, he did so with a strong forearm and averted a opportunity for the Thunder. Yeah, Paris Hyde, not easy to catch him or put him down. So. A nice move by Ollie Hay to help the Swarm out in a dangerous position, which is, of course, Paris Hyde in front of the opposing goal. Someone you always got to be watching, that is for sure. Enright with a strong pass towards Gregory on the far side. And then played down low, it's Whiston Lee, and he'll just throw it off the ice. A race for the puck here, but that will go all the way down and an icing on the Swarm. So 12. 32 remaining here in this second period. We're nearing the halfway point and still no goals on the board. Reed Cole chasing down that icing, uh, trying to prevent it. Whistle went, Hartford touched up, gave Reed a little bit of extra business. No call by the referee, he had his hand up, but the hand up indicates a signal to the benches. You have five seconds to get your players on set for the faceoff, then that hand goes down. The refs are ready to drop the puck. So with that icing, the Swarm unable to get a change here. So maybe some tired legs from the Swarm as the Dunedin Thunder made a fresh change on that icing. But with the puck now in the Thunder end, the Swarm able to make a half change here and get those fresh little legs out there on the ice. Dangerous play there as Mawson had to step in front of Orr. Otherwise, he had a free path to the net. And it'll be Tuller. Near side to Mawson. Plays it up, but the only man there is Devlin, and he shoots it right on, but a block was saved by Canada. Uncharacteristic turnover there by the all-black defenseman. And it pops right to the stick of Vortinov. He finds Atwell. Atwell with a crease. Centering back door towards Vortinov. Still loose. And finally played up to Mawson. Now Mawson walks it in. Back door shot towards Vortinov. Unable to convert. Kozak tries a wraparound. But nothing doing for the Swarm as a lot of opportunities, but unable to control that bouncing puck. As that one lays the boom down into Joe Orr as uh, the Thunder come back down the other way. Quite quickly, I might add, and it's just back into the Phoenix Thunder zone now. Kozak with it. Kozak doing well to evade three defenders. Puts one towards the net. Just missed blocker side. Hopkinson plays it down low to Mawson, who's pinched in for the Swarm. He's kind of battling two Thunder players as they go to the ice. Thuler with it now. He takes it from the point. He steps in. 
Mawson, he turns around and that's blocked in front by Greer Lanshaw. Mawson with a big shot, stopped by a skate and cleared. Thunder doing a great job of protecting their own goal there despite some good possession by the Swarm offensively. Now Hopkinson all alone. Hopkinson backhand. Oh, and a save by Butterkowskis. Reaches out with the blocker to deny Richie Says Hopkinson. Says no to Richie. Richie, very smart on the play, reading that well and cutting in, getting a chance. Forehand backhand move, and his backhand elevated, but not high enough against the six foot one Jonas Barakowskis. I think Richie knows he had a chance possibly to do the Mighty Ducks forehand, backhand, forehand, not the backhand. That did not go. So the premier chance of the game so far is denied by Johnny B flashing that blocker. Hopkinson was all alone and it remains scoreless. Here, just halfway through this game with 10 minutes remaining here in the second period. As we hope to see things open up as it is in a four on one shaping up for the Phoenix Thunder. They shoot, oh, and that just missed that far side. Harford had numbers to work with and instead missed everything as two players on the far side hit the deck. It's Atwell again in the thick of it. Certainly uh, putting that body to use. He is definitely putting the pressure on those uh, Thunder D. So Paris High beats out the icing here as the pass was just in front of him, but he's still able to gain control. Looking for a centering feed towards Enright. It's knocked to the corner where Ollie Hay is throwing the body around. Just a chopped out by Vortinoff and finally up to Cole. Cole's looking far ice towards Ben Taylor. He'll play it up the wall for Vortinoff, but it's Hyde who beats him there. And then play it up and here come the Thunder. That allowed Hyde to get the puck out of the zone as Vortinoff didn't get to the puck early enough and Thunder easily got out of the zone just by not getting to that 50-50 puck quick enough. Now Enright doing battle on the near wall, but instead it's the Swarm who make away with it. And here's Bonarkowskis wins the race to that puck and is able to put it into the zone. Good hard skating by number two in white. And here's Reed Cole with it, gets around one man, but unable to keep the footing. And Devlin will regain control for the Thunder. Now Bonarkowskis once again. He's able to find the stick of poles off, but he'll play it back to Tuller. And Tuller up towards Hopkinson. Hopkinson across the line, looking for Janssen on the near side, but that just skipped over his stick. And now to the far side, Bonarkowskis able to keep it in, but pays a price for it as Blair puts a shoulder into his chest. And now here come the Thunder every way. It's Devlin, Devlin put a shot right on. Big save by Canada as that was nice loose pass. off the melon, but able to hold on and once again, no rebound. So it just goes to show for you viewers out there that play in one end can quickly transfer and go down towards the other when you are successful on defense in your own zone, leading to offense the other way, as seen when the Thunder got the puck, battled for it, moved up through neutral ice, got a two on one odd man rush, actually a three on two, and managed to have a scoring chance. But Kennedy, as he's been doing all game so far, steps up and takes down that shot using his face mask of all things. Whatever it takes. And there's the leather. And there's the Shining calm, again. calm catch of the leather. Great glove hand by Kennedy. Didn't have to put too much effort into it there, but still calm and collected all the way. And of course, Canada will be joining us at the end of this period where we can maybe get a little bit of insight into his career as where he started here in playing for the Thunder now in his first year with the Swarm and making it count. That is true. We'll have a couple of tidbits, little gems for you to uh, listen to and as we unpluck them and let Canada tell us more about them. So Puck played into the swarm end. It's Kozak, the first man back. He goes up the wall towards Mawson. Able to strong arm it out of the zone and get it up to Vortinov. Vortinov cuts across the middle, trying to go back towards Cole. Puck still loose. Here's Mawson all alone. He shoots, it goes in. The swarm are celebrating, but still no signal from the referee. No goal, no goal is, is the call as the whistle, whistle blew. 
before the puck made it to the back of the net. A contentious moment here in Botany. Well, the uh, Botany Swarm are going to the bench celebrating, but I believe that Swarm B logo might have to be taken out of their backside at the moment because that's going to sting. That is a no-goal call. No goal call from the referee. Wessel had gone. However, faceoff still will be inside the Phoenix Thunder zone. Swarm looking to get something going, even though they were denied on that one there. Puck was apparently still loose and somehow made it behind Barakowskis, but it does not count. It remains scoreless here in Botany, Auckland. So that's Reed Cole on the far side. Jostling for position, trying to gain control of that puck, and it pops out to Paris Hyde. He avoids a check from Ollie Hay, but able to get it out of the zone. Now on the near side, that's Sandoy who steps in front of a pass. Leaves it for Winston Lee. He puts one in, and he scores! Josh Winston Lee with a twisted wrister from the blue line, and the Swarm get the first goal of this game. Wow, just Johnny on the spot, Josh Whitson Lee. He um, takes a nice drop pass, kind of um, making the most of that chance as he wires a laser shot upstairs and gets the first goal for the Botany Swarm as many fans are celebrating, including number one fan Bryce Rizzo cheering on his Botany faithful. So that opens up the scoring here with 6.46 remaining in the second period. That happened quick, maybe caught a little bit of a surprise here from the Dunedin side and maybe even Johnny B himself as that went right over the shoulder on the glove side hitting nothing but net. Still probably a little bit unsure on that uh, goal against and Swarm trying to ride this wave of momentum they've created for themselves, keeping that pressure down against the Thunder as they battle and jockey for possession of the puck. So perhaps some of the Swarm fans thinking the puck does not lie as they get a quick goal after that one was disallowed. And we'll see if the Thunder can return the favor as Devlin tries to throw one towards the net, towards a streaking Blair. And then Hopkinson loses the footing and we have a whistle and it looks like there will be a penalty for a tripping as Hopkinson hit the deck in front of his own net. Referee was a little bit late with his decision there as to make a call there. I think he kind of waited to see how that play was developing. But clearly the feet from Hopkinson were taken out from underneath him as Devlin got him. And the referee says, oh, no, no, sorry, yep, I did see that, you will go as that is dangerous territory that the Thunder are playing with right now as the Swarm up by one, looking to capitalize and go up possibly by two in this second period. Great opportunity here for the Swarm. It will be Atwell to take the draw against Hyde to the right of Batarkowskis. One cleanly to Mawson, and you'll play it down low to Bortinov. Now down low behind the net, that's Atwell trying to do some work. And he'll give it to Kozak. Up top to Thuler. Now back to Kozak on the near side. Centering feed, trying to get it towards Atwell. But instead it's Darling who steps in front of that. And now it's Hyde who has it and he's able to clear the length of the ice. And the Thunder will get a bit of a change here as that's Reed stepping out. And now Mawson from his own end. He'll decide to just skate it himself. Chipping and it, in and chased by himself. Trying to go coast to coast there. Vorted the, off. The Swarm elect to keep their first power play unit going past that one minute mark. And played up to Kozak. He's got a room to work. Instead leaves it for Tuller. Tuller trying to go back door towards Atwell. Unable to get much of a shot off. Instead it's Mawson behind the net. Stop, starts. Looks for Vortinov. Vortinov was going high glove, but that was blocked nicely by Hyde. And now Harford tries to clear. Instead, it's Vortinov. Near side towards Tuller. Tuller jostling for the puck with Harford, but instead it's played to Hyde, and the Thunder have numbers here if they want an odd man opportunity, and here's Harford shorthanded going back door towards Hyde, but Vortinov was able to retreat and get a stick on it. And now Hyde trying to kill some time in the far corner. 
20 seconds left on the Thunder penalty as teams both make changes. So a nice hard shift there by the Thunder to kill some time. I'm going to get some fresh legs out there. That's Aguero Lanshoff. Get it up and not out as Sandoy keeps it in. Play down low towards Poles up, and a nice play by Aguero Lanshoff. But then a turnover here in front. Puck was loose in the slot there momentarily. We're back to five on five hockey as Devlin's out of the box, and then the puck goes over the glass, and we get that whistle, and that faceoff will remain in the zone. So we are back to even strength. It's five on five hockey here, Paradise Botany. At the hive, as it is cold, I think the um, Botany Swarm have a new mascot, and just checking to see where it is, but it's something Stinger. Stinger Beasley, as there's a nice blocker save by Barakowskis right off the draw. And then looking for Pozov back door, but that's knocked away by Felipe. Then it bounces right in front, and Hopkinson took a hack at it, but Barakowskis held strong. Now in the near wall. Played up to Joe Orr. He was looking far side for Blair, but Janssen got a stick on that. And now here comes Devlin behind the pack. Devlin all alone. He shoots it a big save by Canada. Once again. Answering the call on a breakaway. Making the stops when it counts. The NZ AHL might want to reconsider going glove side on Canada as he has been flashing it consistently this year. And there's a sharp angle shot once again, but Canada once again uses that mitt and he'll hold on. That Kennedy, he's regaining that form that took him all the way to the WHL of the Western Hockey League in Canada. That's a major junior top level hockey. We're going to ask him a few questions about that. Also, what led him over to Kazakhstan? That's one of the places where that man has played. He's currently playing for the Botany Swarm and doing a great job of it. Right here in New Zealand, the world traveler has found his home in that Swarm uniform. So the near wall, that will be Prattley gaining control. He's finally taken down by Andrew Hay, no call. As it comes up towards Reed, who will try to hold it in, but was unable to do so. And now it's Lewis with the puck. He goes up the far wall, that's past everyone. And Luke Simon will beat his man to the puck, and we have an icing. So a faceoff back in the Thunder zone with just 2.17 remaining here in the second period. Very consistent play from Andrew Hay using his body and size and experience to lean on some of those younger, more active Thunder forwards. Proving effective as the Swarm get a face off in the offensive zone. Well, there's a shot that actually deflected off somebody in front and sailed over the net. Dangerous play there. As At flattened by Atwell. And then another hit as Mawson takes down Tom Wilson. And the Swarm using their physicality here for their advantage as they're able to regain control up the zone. Kozak tries to make a fancy move by himself, but instead loses the puck. Borzanov was there to recover, though. Now up to Atwell, but that's over his stick. Race for the puck as Enright was looking to get to it, but Mawson was able to just chip it up. And the puck flies into the bench, and we'll get a whistle and a faceoff just outside the zone. So last minute and uh, 38 seconds in this second period. Please stay tuned as we will be, as mentioned, uh, talking to Swarm goalkeeper Matt Kennedy. So it'll be Hopkinson to take the draw against Hyde. And it's played over the far side. Race for the puck is Janssen and Darling. Darling beats him there. And it's played to Ollie Hay. Near side to Polozov, who just taps it over to Hopkinson. And he gets it right back. Polozov down low to Hopkinson. Hopkinson all alone. Shot, bouncing puck. Still loose. Butterkowski is draped across the score. And Hopkinson is rewarded in front from all that extra effort as he bats it in backhand on that opposite side, kind of wrapped around, assisted by Janssen. Just a bouncing puck going everywhere, left goal mouth, right goal mouth, behind the net and just popped to the stick of Hopkinson who was in the right place at the right time and was able to make no mistake with it. 
Good to see another number 11 getting on the score sheet. Well done, Richie. That's a big goal for the Storm right now, having that 2-0 lead. But in hockey, no lead is safe. Thunder definitely wanting to answer back quickly before the period is over. So a bit of a momentum swing once again. The Swarm getting that late second period goal to double their lead. And it looked for a second there that Botarkowskis was going to keep that out as he was draped across the goal mouth. Just reaching without a stick as looking like a beached whale out there a little bit as it ended up just not working out. You never like to see your goaltender laying on their back in front of the goal, that's for sure. Never a good spot to be. No, that's true. But hey, that uh, just shows the sign of the amount of pressure that was put onto him and his defensive group as they couldn't quite reorganize themselves to be structurally sound. And I think Jonas had actually lost his goal stick, which doesn't give him that third bit of leverage to balance himself. So that must have been one of the reasons that led him to being in that vulnerable position. So we have a penalty here on the Swarm. This looks like to be a delay of game as they threw the puck over the glass, causing this whistle and stoppage of play from their own end, which you cannot do. Hence, they will be down a man for the next two minutes in the last 52 seconds here of this second period. There's a shot right on, and Canada forced to make a save. So good opportunity here for the Thunder to try to get one back before the close of the period. Here's Joe Orr. Throws one towards, skate save, rebound, and a diving stop from Mawson as he saved an open goal. So Canada getting assistance from uh, his defenders where, where needed. That was a timely one, too, by Mawson. Great opportunity by the Thunder, denied by two sliding players. One of them was not the goaltender, but big man Mawson himself as he absorbs a hit on the far side and then returns the favor, but unable to keep the puck in. Now play to the near side, it's Devlin. Centering feed, shot, and a big save by Canada. What a great bit of side-to-side -side movement there from the goaltender. So just under six seconds remaining in this second period action. As the referee has got the gate open on the swarm side with indication of a roughing call to number five, the very conservative defensive man, Eddie Commons, somewhat uncharacteristic there. Eddie Commons trying to grind out the last bit of the second period, but instead grinded a little too much friction on that. And we will be five on three for the remainder of this second period. Good opportunity, just got better for the Thunder. Five on four became a five on three. And, and it's Hyde who wins the draw cleanly. Here comes Hartford, last chance of the period, loses it, centering feed towards Gregory, he misses. And that will do it for the second period, folks, as the Thunder will begin this third on a five on three power play for a minute five, giving them a great opportunity to hop right back in this thing. So stay tuned, folks, as we interview Matt Kennedy. And thank you once again for watching this ice hockey action.
Welcome back here to the Hive. I am joined with legendary goaltender Grace Harrison. <laughs> the voice change there. <laughs> <laughs> the voice for television. This is completely live. How does it Sorry. feel here to be a goaltender for the Swarm? I know you've played D1 overseas at the NCAA level. What's it like being part of the NZIHL action? Yes, yeah, it's, it's absolutely awesome. Um, it's great fun. Uh, get to be on a team with a lot of the guys I grew up playing hockey with. So, um, yeah, getting to kind of rekindle the, the early days is, is awesome. And you have formed kind of a dynamic duo mm -hmm. in the pipes there with yep. you and Matt Kennedy, yep. who has been playing lights out oh, again tonight. Amazing. What's that been like this season? Yeah, it's 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 just awesome. We're we're doing a really good job feeding off each other's energy. Um, I, you know, he's he's had a few more years in this league than I have, uh, so it's it's been awesome to learn from him, and and uh, he's definitely helped kind of up my game quite a bit. Um, yeah, but. Uh, Unfortunately, he's uh, he's two teams away from getting his permanent residency or his passport or whatever, so he's still an import. Still an import, mm. as many of us have gone through ourselves. Mm. Now, mm. you and Matt are not just ice hockey phenomenon, no. but in line as well. Yeah, we're we're taking the tandem uh, across the codes. Um, it's it's quite an exciting time for us this year. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, best of luck in that endeavor, and best of luck finishing out the season here with the Swarm. Ah, oh, thanks. Stay tuned. Third period action coming your way.
Nenakoto Katwoa. Kia ora, hockey fans out there. Thank you again for listening and watching this live broadcast brought to you here by Sauls. And uh, I'm Ian Wanamaker, joined alongside the um, most amazing Joel Rindelop. Joel, thanks again for doing these wonderful interviews and commentary. It is a grace and a pleasure to hear the velvety tones that come through on those speakers out there. Well, right back at you, Ian. We have some great hockey through two periods. Two to nothing lead so far for the Swarm, but the Thunder are going to be starting this period on the power play in a great chance to steal back some of that momentum. Yeah, and they have the Swarm are down two men in the penalty box, one for a minute five, another for a minute 55. So they will be looking to kill that off and possibly put this scoreline out of reach. But who knows, Thunder will not go down. They know what is on the line, folks, and they are playing for their season, getting into that third playoff spot is vital for them, so they don't want to give up any points, any chance here in the third. Well, that's right. They cannot really afford to drop any points. If they were to get swept this weekend, that would pretty much all but do it for the Thunder's season. They would really be asking for the Admirals to kind of do them a few favors. Uh, however, they do have the Admirals next on their schedule, but you know they're thinking it all about tonight one game at a time. Absolutely, and you never want to see teams relying on other teams to get through, and you really, again, it might sound cliche, but playing it as one game at a time, one shift at a time, and I think Coach Avery's message should be very clear, as he said at the beginning of the game, plug away, keep playing to their systems, and things are going to have to give at some point. Canada is absolutely playing un unreal. He's a brick wall back there, and he's looking to break him. It's not going to be an easy test, so they're going to have to get an odd bounce, a couple deflections, something. Something, something, right? Because Canada has been fantastic back there, not only with his positioning, his movement, his reflexes, but no rebounds. No second chance opportunities for the Thunder, despite their many attempts at just throwing it on goal. As mentioned, you said flashing that leather. He is just coming up with the save every single time and holding on to it. So Thunder going to have to take his eyes away, get some traffic in front, and it's going to be a tough task here at the Hive Botany with the home fans cheering on their Swarm faithful. Yeah, nearly capacity crowd here for the Swarm. They have been with this Botany side all year long. You love to see the kind of passion that we have here in New Zealand ice hockey, especially here in Auckland as the West Auckland, of course, at the Pirate Ship gets a bit rowdy in its own right. Absolutely, and uh, shout out to any of the West Auckland fans that might be tuning into this broadcast. We appreciate you watching because you'd be curious to see who you may face in that second versus third showdown playoff to see who reaches into that final playoff spot for the Burgle Cup here in NZIHO. So here we go, third period action underway. Atwell wins the draw, but down two men, no one there. But Ollie Hay makes a nice recovery, able to send it the length of the ice, killing off some precious seconds of this five on three. Hartford briefly stops behind his own net just to say, hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, no one's pressuring me. It's a five on three. Let's go. So here's Hyde with it now. Harford. And you can see this umbrella collapsing a little bit here, getting closer to that net, but a errant pass there sends it all the way down. And 30 seconds remaining here on this five on three opportunity. Yes, Joel, you might say that the Thunder really forced the issue on that right-hand side, kind of negating that left side, which was open and not getting it through. But Harford streaks right through the five on three defense and roofs it, but it hits off. Looked like Kennedy got a piece and that went up and over into the netting. Harford showing some great work there, great speed as well, going coast to coast, almost untouched and got a great opportunity, but he ended up hitting the wrong netting. So the referees are indicating that did not deflect off a swarm defender or goaltender. So the faceoff comes outside the zone. And we play on as that penalty expiring momentarily here to pulls off on the delay game. Here's Joe Orr into the zone. He'll leave it for Devlin. Shot right on. Rebound. No, there is no rebound because Canada gets a mid on it. It looks as though the referee is indicating there will be some offsetting penalties as uh, Canada made that great save was down on his backside, puck was loose, put a mitt on it to get the whistle, but Barakowskis came through, that's Mattis, 
and cleaned up his opponent, which I think was Joseph Orr. And Orr may be getting a little free with his stick and hitting um, towards the goaltender. Mattis took exception, knocked him down. Both players will serve two minutes. Although we do have the body player seemingly going to have two minutes extra on the clock up on the scoreboard. We shall see how this unfolds. It is still a five. Oh, the form have four players on the ice, so that looks like. Referee is giving us an indication in to the players as to what's going on. So it, it will, be, will a be a four on three. Oh, four on three, that's what's happening here. There we four go. on three, so a lot of ice to work with here for the Thunder for 45 seconds as offsetting penalties there to Orr and Barakowskis. We'll give the Thunder an opportunity here with just over a minute into this third and final period. It looks as though the, um, the Zebras or the, the refs and linesmen are going to consult here just with the score bench to make sure that penalties will be displayed up on the score club. Or maybe he just needed a little bit of a fresh air, a bit of a chat, a little corredo with the score bench. A little, little break. Yeah, a little bit of a breather. It's hard work out there, even for the stripes. So they're ready to go. And it will be a draw to the left of Canada between Devlin and Atwell. Atwell wins it towards Hay. But a nice play by Enright there to chip it away. But that's just momentarily as it's cleared out to center ice. So it'll be Darling. He'll skate it up himself. Gets it into the zone. Puts on the brakes with Atwell on him. Spinorama number two is able to be a little bit of room for him. Near side to Hyde. Hyde was looking back door as Enright was cutting across the goal mouth. And now back to Hyde. Hyde and Enright again and a deflection and a big save by Kennedy as he read that beautifully. And now there's a shot from a far side. Ollie Hay trying to get it out. Instead it pops towards Kennedy and he's forced to make another save. And now Hyde up top. Hyde with a clapper. He shoots, and that hits. Rebound and a goal. And right on the doorstep, just as Eddie Commons gets released out of the penalty box to make it a four-on-four -four situation. But he was not in the play quick enough to mark anyone. And the Thunder having one extra man take advantage of it and put the puck in the back of the net with a sprawled out Kennedy. Absolutely what the doctor ordered for the Phoenix Thunder cutting that lead in half, and now it's just a one-goal game. Speaking of ones, there's uh, three sets of ones oh, up on the one, on that board there. There's um, one 11 in the penalties to Mattis and Joe Orr, respectively. And so. number 1-1, one, one, Richie Hopkinson here to take the draw for the Swarm as we will be playing four-on-four four hockey for the next minute and five seconds. So Hopkinson into the zone. He's got Mawson with him, trying to find him, but that pass is too elevated. Mon Austin unable to do much with it, and it's Polzoff at center ice now. Three on two the other way. Polzoff loses possession. Great stick there by Harford. And here comes Devlin into the zone. Devlin leaves it for Gregory. That's just in front of him, and a diving play by Polzoff to keep him in the near corner. Now Harford, he'll throw it towards the net as Devlin was doing a nice job to screen Canada, but the shot was unable to go through. And now here comes Hopkinson the other way. Hopkinson into the zone. He shoots. Save made by Barakowskis. Good to see Richie electing to shoot the puck that time as he goes off for a change. And the other time he made a pass. And Richie was able to take that deep into the zone himself. The defender, Reed, did not step up on him at all, giving him some room to work, but Barakowskis made a nice glove save to just get a piece of that one. So here's Harford with the puck. He'll get it into the zone and just backhand it in. Knocked out of the air with the glove by Mawson, and he'll play it to Sandoy. Sandoy spins around. Now he's got some speed, and he'll skate it up himself. One-handed shovels it towards Whist and Lee, but they were not on the same page and it's cleared back to center ice. Swarm will regroup here, try to bring it back in. And here's Darling with the puck. He'll shield the defender from it using his own net. And then played up the wall, but it's Ollie Hay who steps in front of that. Still with possession, it is Hay. Now played down low towards Sandoy. Sandoy up the wall. 
And that's Audis who has it, but he's knocked off the puck by Atwell, who's been busy with the shoulder this evening. And played up to Hay. Hay into the zone. Trying to find a centering feed, will just softly throw it towards the net. And now up to Sando on the far side. Both defenders low here for the Swarm with both Hay and Sandoy on the attack. But the Thunder still unable to get it out. He's now he goes for a change and then uh, Swarm still have the puck looking to keep it in that Thunder zone. Nice play by Sandoy to kick that uh, in. And there's a centering feed there. Unable to find Cole just in front of him, so Bonarkowskis will wisely scoop that up and get a whistle. Give his teams a bit of a breather as they get some other fresh troops out on the ice, as you have mentioned earlier in the game. Coach running 1-2-3-4, one, 1-2-3, two, three, one, two, three, so that they're going to need uh, to use all those lines. As this game has just one goal in it, 2-1 to the Swarm at the moment. Shots are 32 apiece. And here's Harford. Played up the ice is Luke Simon instead who has it. He played over towards Andy Hay who was able to evade a hit from Enright. And then Luke Simon with a nice play there to sidestep his man. Nicely. Evade Gregory and throw it into the zone as Commons takes a seat in the far corner with Harford throwing him to the ice. And now here's a turnover in front. Kozak puts it on net and he just misses wide. Wadarkowskis might have got a piece of that as well. Centering feet again looking for Kozak. But instead, Paris Hyde takes it and he'll dish it to Gregory on the near side. Back to Hyde. Hyde going back door. Had a man and right, but couldn't connect with the pass. Now behind the net, that's Simon. He'll leave it for Mawson, trying to get it up the ice. Instead, he'll decide to skate it himself before dishing it over to Kozak on the near wall. Kozak into the zone. Decides to take a clapper himself, but Unable to too much on it, and that deflects over the glass, and we will get a whistle. Just goes to show you, Joel, that both teams actually have a very strong transition game, and we have been seeing quite a lot of that with this open flow defense that both teams tend to play, and you've got end-to-end -end action, so when one team gives the puck up, it's back in their zone quite quickly, and vice versa, so pay attention, team, as we have a great third with 14 minutes left. A lot of ice hockey left to play between these two. You can see the desperation and the urgency starting to kick in on both sides as they know how important this game is to the, the fate of their season. Now here's Devlin with some wheels trying to make an aggressive play on the near wall, but it's Poles off with it. He'll stop behind his own net. Play it up towards Thuler. Thuler looking cross ice, does a nice nifty skate work, but a great back check by Joe Orr to steal it from him. And he'll play it out to center ice for Atwell. Atwell plays it up towards Thuler, but that's behind him. And he, but Atwell makes a nice play, taking it into the zone. Backhander looking for Vortinoff. It and looks it, like he might be penalized for an errant stick. He got a slash in on the, he knows it right away. He goes to the penalty box. Not the time to take that type of a penalty. And he knows he must be frustrated with himself getting a little, yeah, what do you say? Slap happy. Yeah, slap happy. <laughs> Maybe using that bright orange Taiwan stick. Hard to miss. Yeah, Hard to is, miss that true. twig out there. Perhaps that is why the referee quickly put that arm up. I see that orange, and I raise you a penalty, young Bortonov. And I must say, the referee, Ryan Hissog, has been on the ball today, calling a tight game consistently here in the hive. Power play for the Thunder. 13 minutes left in this third. Minute 40 in this power play. Let's see what they put up. The centering feed was looking for Gregory, but a good retreat by Hopkinson to stand in front of that, and the Swarm were able to clear. And Harford, who's going to be on the top of this umbrella power play for the Thunder, start from his own end and leave it for Hyde. The ever-dangerous Paris Hyde who has some speed into the zone. 
tries to go through the defender and then nicely played out by Canada. And not often you see the goaltender with the stick work like that, but very effective at a crucial point in this matchup. Great clearance from Canada, putting the Dunedin Thunder way back in their own zone, 200 feet the other way. Here they are, countering, attacking. There's Devlin shot right on, but glove side and Canada has got that all the way. Again, Thunder not picking up that message. Glove side. Kennedy is going to stop it. All right, go we are back here again tomorrow night. So just 52 seconds remaining in this power play for the Phoenix Thunder. Still down a goal, trying to get that equalizer as the draw here is won by Hopkinson, and the elder Barakowskis will just take those big meat hooks and shovel it out of the zone. So here come the Thunder from their own end. Up to Joe Orr, but he'll actually just let that go to Blair. He puts a long wrister right on, and Canada will smother that right up. Another easy stop for Canada. Maybe uh, the second unit Thunder power play looking to just get that face-off setup that they want on that uh, left side of Canada and right of us here from the commentary booth position. But they've got just under 30 seconds for this man advantage. See what they can do. Thunder actually out shooting the swarm at this point, 34 to 33. So been a pretty even matchup here between these two sides. Now Joe Orr looking to the cross ice feed. There's a shot that's blocked nicely by Sandoy, sacrificing his body for his team. Laying it down literally, so trying to protect that one goal lead. There's an Aaron pass just in front of Devlin, so that will be an icing and a face off back in the Thunder end with just a single second remaining on that penalty to Bortonov. So we will be back to five on five action in just a moment. It'll be straight after the puck drop as we see Bortonov standing up in the penalty box there. Kind of thwarted by the Stinger B somewhere around the place. Stinger Beasley. And there's pulls off off the draw. Finds nothing but the shin pad of Darling. As Bortonov back on the ice goes Straight to the bench to get Janssen out there. And here's Devlin into the zone, trying to get around Malson. Puts on the brakes. Able to buy a little bit of time, but no one really to help him out. And it's finally played out of the zone as Polozov is on his back. Polozov with some pressure here. Finds Janssen. He had a centering feed towards Malson. But instead, two defenders were there for the Thunder. Now played down low. There's Devlin, he's had a long shift out there himself. He'll go straight to the bench after making that pass. And here comes Joe Orr, able to get around Hopkinson. Into the zone, but then Mawson steps in front of him. Yep, that door closed pretty quickly with Mawson being in the way. As Swarm regain possession and take over. Now Mawson will play it in the zone. He was looking towards Polozov, but that was broken up nicely by Lilly. Now Lilly brings it into the zone and offside as Ian Audis could not get back to touch up in time. We will see where that faceoff goes if that's just outside of the swarm zone, if they're going to indicate all of the way down for a deliberate offside, but it doesn't look like that will be the call. So it'll be Reed Cole to take the draw for the swarm. And he will be going up against Gregory. Excuse me, that is Rolf taking the draw with an Otis on either side of him. So third line out here for the Thunder. And that'll be Sandoy. Plays it up towards Commons. Commons with a long wrister, but that's easily steered away by the blocker of Bonarkowskis. As Sandoy puts uh, Sam Otis down. Physicality evident once again here in the third. Swarm being careful as well not to take a penalty in this situation. Even they have a one goal lead. Long stretch pass looking for Kozak. Got through everyone, but he's the first one there, so no icing. Now played up the wall, and 
This goes out of play. Risky maneuver there as it was potentially a delay of game from Paris Hyde who threw that just over the glass. But the referees are saying that it was a deflection before then. So no call and we remain five on five. Yeah, you got to have extra good eyesight when you're a referee just to notice those uh, small margins of error that did tip off the top of the glass. So luckily, Thunder are not penalized and we stay five on five. So here's Mawson with it. Trying to make something happen, but instead he goes the other way. It's Gregory. Now Gregory comes into the zone, but offside. That was a great opportunity for the Thunder, but Enright was just a half step ahead of the play. Again, we got to get that video replay in, installed so we can just check that, but the uh, linesman making the right calls. So here's Paris Hyde into the zone. Centering feed looking for Enright, but some good defensive coverage there by the Swarm. And now it's Tuller on the near side. Looking up towards Vortanov, but it comes right back to Tuller and he'll just skate it himself. Paris Hyde though says, not on my watch, gets a body into him. And the Thunder trying to get an offensive play going. And then a big hit at center ice as Hyde takes down Mawson. And there's a shot right on as Enright looking to get something going, but Canada once again holds his ground at the top of the crease. Something you don't often see, Joel, is a bit of a uh, hip check. Sometimes a little old fashioned, but Paris Hyde using the old hip to send his man over the top, especially when you're going against a uh, larger opponent and someone like Mattis or uh, in that case, Stephen Awesome Mawson. Bringing it back, a bit of a hipster. I do say so myself. Trying to bring it back when it's not so cool. I always got to be dapper and looking good. Got to be a gentleman in acting and deed. I say whatever's effective. And nice play there by Paul is off. He was working on Joe Orr. As the team still trying to get something going here with eight minutes remaining here in the game. Thunder still down one. I wonder when their urgency is really going to kick in here and um, they're going to just have to go into that next gear and amp up their level of play. So an icing here as the puck travels the length of the ice and we're going to face off back in the swarm defensive zone. Much to the chagrin of a lot of the swarm bench. So it'll be Hopkins and pulls off and Janssen line out there. And we are going to have our first timeout of the game called here by um, Colin Van Dieven, assistant coach of the Botany Swarm, as he wants to have a bit of a chat with his troops. A smart move there as he had a tired line out there for the Swarm where the Thunder were able to put out Hyde in that ever potent top front that might have been able to work some magic. In a one gold game, you can't take any chances. Coaches needing to step up in these moments as well, so they got 30 seconds to give their um, their guys a bit of a breather and possibly a change here and give them some instructions so they can regroup and get back to the uh, Botany Swarm plan, whatever that might be. In the seven minute, seven and a half minute mark of this third period. As Coach Avery for his troops uh, gives a little bit of uh, some encouraging words and reminders of what is at stake here at the moment, what they are playing for. Let's go so it's two to one game, 36 go, shots go, for the Thunder to 34 for the Botany Swarm. Great go, goaltending go, go. from both sides. Having 70 shots on goal. Go, go, go. So only three goals. Thus far, that is a 97% save percentage for Matt Canada so far in this match. And a very impressive 94% for Jonas Barakowskis. So those margins of error, very, very small. Both goaltenders playing very well for their respective teams. As the referees converge and come over and have a chat with the Swarm bench saying, I think you had a couple of different defenders on the ice. Can you please put those guys back on as they do nicely? 
and they will make those changes. Interesting. I, I guess I was wrong in my initial inkling that you can make a change after calling a timeout of personnel. It looks like you cannot. But that is not the case. We are standing corrected. And if anyone would know the rule, it would be head referee of the NZIHL, Ryan Hissog. He has earned his stripes. As they say. Top zebra at the zoo, at this case, at the hive. There is a lot of animal references happening here, and we haven't even brought up Mawson yet. Oh, thunder. What kind of noise does that come from? Phoenix. Okay, and a swarm. Why, that would be... A hive, maybe? Uh, Buzzy, Bees? Buzzy Bees? Beasley. Bees? Buzzy Beasley, okay. <laughs> Buzzy Beasley. The latest addition to the swarm family, mascot extraordinaire. What if he carries a pager? That used to beep. Oh, that's not really a buzz. <laughs> yeah, quite a buzz, you know, building in this arena as you as you bring that up. <laughs> the crowd is certainly, well, <laughs> I don't want to say the word, it has two Zs in it, an I and a G and a B. You put the U in it, could be buzzing, I don't know. But they are electric, as is our commentary tonight. We are just stinging your eardrums, that is for sure. Yes, we are bringing the electrical storm, and on the ice, they are bringing the thunder. You cannot bottle this stuff up, folks, please. Here's Atwell with a nifty move. Atwell just oh. whiffed on it. He wanted to go glove side. He saw some open net, and he missed everything. Came across a little friction on the ice. Could not get that one through. Definitely kicking for himself a little bit there. Best opportunity he's seen thus far. But yet still a one goal game that the Swarm here are clinging on to. With just under seven minutes remaining. So Sandai from behind his own net finds a wide open Vartanov on the wing. Played up to center ice but Thunder do a nice job to Break that one up before Hopkinson can finally dump it into the zone. Swarm looking to put in a bit of a defensive shell at the moment. Not doing too much pressure in the offensive zone. And saying that, they are still in possession of the puck in the offensive zone. And here's Hopkinson. Loses control. And then played out to center ice. And here's Lilly. Steps up on the puck, but Hopkinson once again gets that sneaky stick in there. And Kevin Haddock right in the neutral zone. Janssen sidesteps in a Guerre Lanshoff check. And now here comes Joe Ord with some speed. Mawson accidentally hit the ice, but he made a good defensive play there, stopping the progress of the puck. And we have an offside as Polozov seems to be going down as well. The guys are going to need to get their skates sharpened a little bit more and uh, maybe take the edges off. As we get an offside call that is going to be just in front of the Thunder outside their zone. Moss and return to the bench there, laughing at himself a little bit. Not the prettiest or most technical maneuver you'll see from a defenseman, but as we saw from Reed Cole earlier this game, an effective one. Getting the job done and uh, not really caring about what it looks like can sometimes get you the results you are desiring. Here's a centering feed looking for Cole that was broken up, and he is all alone in front of the net. Swarm unable to get it to him. On the near side, this is Blair with the puck. Blindly throws it up the ice, so Sando is able to keep that in. And it's Darling to retreat. And now up to Devlin. Finally, the Thunder are out of the zone, and he'll stop. Trying to find a streaking Joe Orr, but instead it's Ollie Hay the other way. Ollie Hay trying to go through Harford, but he knows better than that. And it's played up to Blair. Now Blair into the zone, back going towards Harford. Harford back door looking for Blair, but unable to get it to him as the Thunder doing a little bit of sneaky passing here in the offensive zone. Looking to get any, any kind of spark they can and generate some kind of offense as the Swarm are 
clinging on to that lead, as you mentioned, and having a bit of a show defensively. And here's a nice play by Mawson, who dumped that in and chased it himself. We've seen that a couple times from the big man. There's a shot that's blocked by Harford. So that 100-game milestone, he's possibly going to get a few bruises for it. Well-deserved by Harford. He's been all over the nice ice today for the Thunder in his 100th NZIHL performance. Now Mawson will just float one up and out of the zone, and it will go the length of the ice for that icing. So some tired legs here for the Swarm are going to have to deal with this top line of Paris Hyde for just a few more moments. That's true, and we just have under four minutes. It's that 3.55 second mark, and it is quite clearly anyone's game as the informant Fossil just out west, Mr. Dobbs himself has saying that the Admirals have just lost. So this really does open things up for that third playoff position, possibly second if people can win all their games, if the Swarm and or Thunder win their games. Yeah, the Swarm would be thinking about hosting that 2-3 matchup if they're able to scrape together a couple wins here, but still plenty of work to do with three and a half remaining in the third period against this feisty, young, determined Phoenix Thunder side. Bonnie Swarm doing really well at the moment, keeping the puck in deep of the offensive zone down below the goal line as we have a break streaking behind the defenders. Here we are, Enright. Unloads a slap shot, save well by Matt Kennedy. Kennedy once again in perfect position to take on that shot on his angle like a pro. Another save there by Kennedy as he's able to keep the stick on it. And the Thunder showing a little offensive life. Race for the puck here and Hopkinson will just chip at it as he had high pressure coming from him. And a great hit play here by Janssen to beat out the icing was able to get back before both Thunder defensemen. And that's the kind of play that you need to see from your team this late in the game in this one goal game. Those little plays really do make a difference, Joel, and uh, Swarm making these plays right now and keeping the Thunder back on their heels in their own zone. Which is not where you want to be if you're a Thunder fan or supporter. They definitely need to get the foot going the other way. Go up ice. So Kennedy will stop it behind his own net for Mawson. Mawson with some pressure from Audis. And now here in the slot, dangerous as Polozov actually went through the other Audis and into the zone of the swarm. So that's common from the near angle. That shot just deflected to the far side. Now Commons again with the puck. He's got Reed on his back. Reed doing a good job to make things difficult for Commons. And eventually, he'll just say, you know, enough of this. Let's try the other side. And Kozak puts a shoulder into it as Sam Otis hit the deck on the near side. So just in a minute and a half under that, we're going to wonder if the uh, Thunder are going to take the goaltender out of the, um, out of the crease. But Swarm clearly had possession as Thuler is in behind the Swarm goal at the moment. And Barakowskis is still remaining still inside that crease for the Thunder. Now played up to Whitson Lee, the goal scorer here for the Swarm. Nifty move there, trying to get it towards Vortinov, but unable to do so as we approach that one-minute mark remaining in this contest. Now Vortinov gets it into the slot, going back door towards Winston Lee, but that's broken up by Darling. And then behind the net once again. There's Vortinov right in front, and he puts it into the belly of Barakowskis. And he is kicking himself because he had some room to work there. A golden opportunity, as you might say, too, right in front. There it's, uh, as we have a timeout being called by the Phoenix Thunder, quite wise, as they're going to put some kind of plan in place to kind of do an all-in effort here. So timeout here as the Thunder regroup about it. Think of when they're actually going to get Butterkaus is to the bench for that extra skater. This is a nail biter, folks. Don't go anywhere. We have some intense hockey to finish this one up. Yeah, don't go anywhere. You definitely don't want to miss what will happen next here at the Hive, Paradise Botany. 
So this is exciting times here. As Coach Avery has got five troops out there. He's got Joe Orr. He's got Paris Hyde. Kristen Darling. Noah Gregory. Their top unit. And Ben Harford going up against the defensive unit of Richie Hopkinson, Kyle Johnson, and Alex Polozov, Ollie Hay, and Remy Sandor. 45 seconds now. Darling sends it up the wall to Gregory. Gregory, as Barakowskis heads to the bench, the Thunder sent out their extra attacker, the sixth man. That is Devlin. He goes to the top of the point, heads to the net. Orr battling with the puck. Swarm come away with it. Sandoy has it. Kind of tries to freeze it, has it taken away. Devlin gives it up to Darling. Darling at the top of the point. Wrist shot in, deflected, shot. Sure! Right on, 16 and a half seconds. The Thunder tie this game at two. And their side of the crowd is going bananas. Wow, what a dagger here as we have a 2-2 hockey game. 16 and a half seconds and the Phoenix Thunder equalized, pulling the goaltender, having the extra attacker on the ice. They, wow, they actually pulled it all together and their plan seemed to work. That extra man on the ice, a little bit extra pressure. Kennedy couldn't quite get it. Swarm looking a bit distraught here in this last seconds of this third period. Phoenix Thunder tying it up, knowing their season is on the line. They are not done yet, folks. Do not go anywhere. Keep tuning in. Wow, what, what a matchup we've got here tonight. Harford sends a backhand in. Thuler cradles that, puts it up the wall to Janssen. Janssen tries to clear, gets some help from Hay. Ollie streaks over the line, gets in, takes a shot. Oh, take, lifts, his stick is lifted right at the end. And that is the buzzer. We are going to overtime here at the high Paradise Botany. And this matchup between these top, these teams going at it. Do not go anywhere. We will see what the uh, Thunder and the Swarm will put together for their next unit. As we have a small break in between the end of this third period and our overtime. Please don't go anywhere. We get two and a half minutes roughly as the teams will get reset for a bit of a break and a coaches chat so the coaches will decide and determine who's going to be going out on the ice and who stays awesome well kill again folks this is a, what a contest don't go anywhere if you've been watching on that live stream keep that going we are headed into overtime for this matchup the Phoenix Thunder have come back they tied the game in the last minute within the last 16 and a half seconds of this game uh, Parasite doing some amazing and incredible work. The Dunedin Thunder pulled their goalkeeper to have an extra attacker out on the ice. That extra man advantage. They managed to keep the puck in the pressure in the Botany Swarm zone, and they scored. So that sent this game to overtime at the moment. Tied 2-2. Two to two. 40 shots the Thunder have put on the net towards the Swarm, and the Swarm, not to be outdone, one shot behind them, 39 shots on goal. So, again, don't go away. We've got quite... The overtime coming up, um, as it is potentially anyone's game, especially with the news coming in that the West Auckland Admirals have just lost their game. So third place, very much so up for grabs here. And the Dunedin Thunder, sorry, the Phoenix Thunder looking to crawl back that five-point deficit that currently is in the standings between them and the Botany Swarm. So stay tuned as we um, get set here. They're going to have about a minute, minute 10 left in this little mini break. No Zamboni's going to resurface the ice. They're going to get straight back into it. Players kind of limbering up, getting their last little bit of instructions from their coaching staff and taking a bit of a breather, getting some water and uh, getting back out onto the ice for overtime. So all of you faithful watching out there, who have you got? Who are you picking? Who is your person that you think is going to score this overtime winning goal? At the moment, the Phoenix Thunder have number 10, Matt Enright out there with number 16, Paris Hyde, ever dangerous, and number 11, Ben Harford. And for the Botany Swarm, we have got Alexander Polozov, number 10. He is joined by number 20, Oliver Hay, 
And number 25, Remy Sandoy, out on the ice. Three versus three. Those six will go at it when we start overtime. as the Botany Swarm faithful are rallying in behind their team to try and encourage them to get this overtime winner. As the Thunder, they are really on the line, so to speak, trying to get that season turned around to make it into that third place spot. As the Swarm, they win the faceoff. They get possession of the puck. Oli Hay gave it to Remy. Remy to Polozov. Remy gives it back to Polozov behind the net. Electing to hold on to it, getting to shape. Polozov drops to Sandoy. Sandoy gives it up to, to Polozov on his backhand. He streaks, makes his way past two Phoenix defenders. Still in possession of the puck. Squirts out to Hyde. Hyde sends it far side to number 10, Enright. Enright up to Harford. Harford with it. Goes one-on-one -on -one against Hyde. Hyde centering pass to Hyde. Gets it on net. Just missed the goal. Possibly the best chance so far to start this overtime. Out in front. Shot. Save. That's blocked by Ollie Hay. Hyde looking. Gives it over to Hartford. Hartford has it now at the top of the blue line. Surveys his options. Looking. Sends it on net. Tipped by Hyde. Hyde in front. And that has Kennedy. Puts a glove on it. And we will have our first stop. That's one minute gone exactly. As the Thunder putting some pressure straight back onto the swarm. As those first two units go off for a well-deserved rest. Got 21, Devlin lining up for the faceoff against six, Atwell. Atwell wins that draw, sends it to Thuler. Thuler spins his way out of the zone, goes up against his defenders, gives it to Atwell. Atwell back in in front, on the net to Kennedy, loses it. Atwell shoots, and he gets his own rebound and scores. Michael Atwell, swarm assistant captain, gets his own rebound after a couple of digs at it, and he scores, burying the puck shortly into overtime, and we have a 3-2 win to the Botany Swarm as this crowd just goes absolutely bananas for their team. Swarm winning three to two in overtime with the 41st shot onto the goal of Mattis Barakowskis. Thunder coming ever so close to getting that done, but man, what a hockey game, folks. That was absolutely fantastic. What exciting back-to-back -back action. Please do not go away as we have these two teams going at it once again tomorrow evening, 5 p.m. puck drop. Phoenix Thunder looking to keep their season alive with a must-need win game as they are absolutely stunned and stung here at the Hive by the Botany Swarm. After that initial three-on-three -three with Paris's line, their number one unit getting thwarted by Remy Ollie. And Polozov, the second unit out there with Atwell and Thuler, really getting it done, putting that pressure straight back on the Thunder. They actually had a two against three break. And Atwell managed to get the pass from Thuler, broke down that left side, had a shot on goal, followed up his shot, got his own rebound. That was saved by Jonas. Managed to get the puck back, then put it back into the goal. What a contest as we have the customary handshakes between both clubs. Botany Swarm shaking hands with the Phoenix Thunder and the customary handshakes towards the referees as well. And the Swarm much deserved overtime victory. Michael Atwell getting the game winner for the Botany Swarm as they announce the three stars of the evening. Number 16. Josh Whitson Lee with one goal in the game. He is announced as our third star. Second star of the evening. Someone who's made 39 total saves and some absolute beauty saves to keep the swarm in this game and contest was number 32, Matt Kennedy. And tonight's first star from the Botany Swarm as the swarm salute the fans. And get a well-deserved cheer. Well, the overtime winner, how can you not put him up on the first star as Michael Atwell. Take a bow, sir. You certainly well-deserved that. Collect the puck for a souvenir. Well, 
Thank you very much for your eyes and ears anywhere that you've been watching. Um, many, many thanks from myself and um, Joel Rindelob. We are the commentary team from Botany. Thank you very much to our production team alongside with Josh getting it done for you. Tune in again tomorrow, 6, 5 p.m. puck drop for more action between the Phoenix Thunder and the Botany Swarm. Thanks for watching. Good night, everyone.